King Bran! Bran is king! Bran the Broken is now putting wheelchair access all over the Seven Kingdoms. Look, 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 look. Check this out. Bran, in the source material, has actually only had three POV chapters since Bill Clinton was in the Oval Office getting head. Like, that's crazy. The, the, the Bran, who's the king of Westeros. So much so to the point that George R. R. Martin related this over to Dan and Dave, and Bran became the king in the main series. He has not had very much story written about him in the past several books. In this video, I want to discuss several different things. It's kind of all over the place. Remember, my videos are a stream of consciousness and not some scripted thing that I took time to write. I more so just put notes together. I feel like my videos tend to be more free-flowing that way. All of that aside, please do me a massive favor and slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 42069. <laughs> Get it? Uh, and also, make sure you subscribe and turn those notifications on. That's really, really important if you enjoy my content, as it greatly helps out my channel when combating against YouTube's ranking algorithm. Remember, my videos are just for entertainment throughout the wait for the next Winds of Winter book, and also for House of the Dragon Season 1. It's referred to on this channel as the Lona. Now here's your side. Alright, before I jump into King Bran, uh, I've been doing a giveaway for the past two videos on my channel, and I will be starting another one soon, uh, within the next week or so, but the winner of the, my most recent giveaway, which for, was for a simple $20 Amazon gift card, just a way of saying thank you to every single person who watches my content, uh, is Jason CK. Now, this dude has been a longtime subscriber on my channel. So, if you're watching this right now, Jason CK, I've put an image of your uh, profile picture up on the screen. If you're watching this right now, go ahead and leave me a comment on this video and tell me how to get in touch with you or DM me over on Twitter. Uh, my, my username is Sir underscore Hunts. But jumping right into it. All right. No, no brand theory or really just discussion video would be complete without mentioning how his character will end. Now, obviously, he was completely absent from A Feast for Crows. And since that's the the case, well, that means, you know, there's only two books that have been released since the year 2000, so that's why I mentioned that he's only had three POV chapters since Bill Clinton was in the Oval Office, which I was 10 years old when that happened, so that showed, or, the, you know, like 2000, so the lead over, whatever the fuck, it's been a while, right? One of the main reasons why George is hesitant to write about the 12-year-old boy who saves the, the world is because what is going on right now in Bran's uh, character arc is pretty dark and fucking twisted. He's basically basically just been fed Jojen and he's north of the wall. I'm just going to kind of summarize here because I'm pretty sure every single person watching this video knows exactly what the fuck's going on with Brand, uh, uh, Brand for the Winds of Winter and obviously what happens to him at the end of a dance. But basically he's north of the wall, he's chilling in the cave, he finally met the Three-Eyed Crow, aka Bloodraven, aka an individual who has been around in Westeros for an extended period of time. Not like his show counterpart who, you know, the show said he's been in the tree for a thousand years and like you could twist that around how you want to, but the character in the books, the actual character Blood Raven has only been around for a hundred or so years, and he has influenced lots of parts of Westerosi history. And I think, uh, you know, just sort of giving a little bit of backdrop to his character, I think that uh, Bran 1.0 was actually Euron Greyjoy, right? So, uh, in theory, Euron is given these dreams. Blood Raven is sort of trying to figure out who is going to be a successor at this time. He realizes that there's a bit of magic in Euron, and he goes to reach out to Euron. He maybe does it one or two times, and those dreams really obviously make a connection and open uh, Euron's eye. That's why he's called Crow's Eye, right? So um, he has his third eye open. That bridge to magic is enhanced and strengthened, and then obviously that probably allowed Blood Raven to peer into the future and to see where Euron's path was truly leading him, right? And when he does this, he sees, holy shit, Cthulhu, this guy's gonna fucking summon a Kraken, let me back up. So he backs up, he stops sending dreams and messages to Euron, and instead finds that, you know, Bran, Blood, Blood Raven Jr., right, is going to come in the form of Bran Stark, Bran the Broken. The, the connection with Euron has already been made, so it's too late. So Euron is, you know, obviously on this mad path to bring or become a living god in Westeros, <coughs> Bran is uh, kind of like the antithesis of that. So Bran will become a living god in Westeros, a god king in Westeros, but like the good kind, so to speak, right? So just, just getting back on track here. King Bran was told to Dan and Dave by George R. R. Martin. 
That was going to be the ultimate end game for Bran Stark since the beginning. George has, has several character arcs already planned out. He's just sort of figuring out their journey to how they get there. So Bran will become king of the Seven Kingdoms. The, the question is, to what aspect? Like, how much more will it make sense in the books? Because obviously, we kind of see it coming on the show, but the fact that they had to rush the last two seasons and really not, uh, they didn't have any source material to base their adaptation off of, we kind of got this sort of jumbled mess. But ultimately, it did kind of make the most sense for Bran to become king. It's just Tyrion's speech about how a story, it, like, what unites people more than a story. It's like, if that's the case, then what happened seven seasons prior when you need money and gold and, and men and, and, like, like power to do everything, right? So you had, you had all these stories. Anyway, anyway, that aside, Bran will be king in the Winds of Winter. I think it's interesting that if you look at what he did in the TV show and what we think he's going to do in the books, it's going to be like drastically different, right? So the main thing leading up in the TV show prior to season seven, season eight was that Bran is going to discover the truth of Jon Snow's lineage. He finds out in season six, his main goal has to be to deliver the news to Jon Snow so Jon Snow can fulfill his destiny and unite the seven kingdoms after saving them from the White Walkers, right? Like winter is coming. That was the big plot line. But then that kind of got chalked up and, you know, we got the seasons that we got. But in the books, that plot line is still very much in effect. Now, Jon Snow may not find out his true lineage from Bran Stark, but the fact of Jon Snow's and Bran's storyline being linked is 100% the case. Now, I've had this theory. <clears throat> it is a silly one, nonetheless, but I've had this theory that it is possible that what is happening to Jon Snow is actually being witnessed by Bran, and we know that Bran can time travel, so maybe Bran sees this happen, then sends a message to Jon at the wall and tells him, you know, hey, calm the fuck down, and then maybe that prevents Jon Snow from actually dying, right? That sounds really cheesy, but it is... 100% possible, I thought it would be more so the case uh, for the TV show, right? So that theory kind of made more sense for the TV show. But in the books, Bran does specifically travel and reach out to Jon. If I'm not mistaken, in uh, Bran Chapter 7, in A Clash of Kings, he dreams that he, Bran dreams that he actually touches ghosts. And when he touches ghosts, he speaks to Jon. Now, there's some interesting things um, to really take away from that, because that whole dream sequence involves Bran looking and sort of talking to himself, uh, but, like, it's noted that he's no longer afraid of the dark, and current Bran is afraid of the dark, and he thinks that, like, that may have led to his third eye opening, like, there's, there's some convolution there in the writing, but I think Bran may be actually reaching out to himself from the future to the past version of himself, right, so we do know that this is what ultimately causes Hodor to go mentally, like, not all the way there, right? He's hobbled in the brain, so to speak. Um, and that's literally from Bran sending out a ripple through time. Like if time was a river, Bran sent, when Bran jumped into Hodor's mind, right? It was such a powerful thing that it linked uh, time and space and it hobbled Hodor's mind. So if that's the case, we've got Bran doing that, right? Uh, in the main storyline, it hasn't happened yet, but we have seen the show's version of it, and that's another note that was told to Dan and Dave from George R. R. Martin, so that will happen in the books. What if Bran was able to reach out from the future to his past in order to warn Jon Snow? Now, I know that sounds super silly, but remember, Bran is, according to George, a 12-year-old boy who will save the world. Well, how will he do this? Jon Snow, in the books, is way more of a pivotal character right so he's he is important in the tv show but his role is much more defined in the books right so prophecy and just the amount of span in characters just it just makes more sense for john to fill certain roles so i think he will have to be the ice to daenerys's fire and the two of them together will actually save the world now whether they both survive in the end i don't know about that but i think the prophecy is zora high the prince who was promised is referring to not just john snow but also to daenerys so john snow will have to be you know know brought back in some sort of way so what if you know Bran has to bring back Jon Snow so that he can be Azor High and maybe just super summarizing here maybe Daenerys is the Nisa Nisa of that story Jon will have to temper her dragons and basically destroy her take one use that to you know sort of unite the seven kingdoms he could use his legitimate Targaryen bloodline to say hey I am all of that is probably you know in line to happen it's just 
so much more complicated. And I think the main point of this story is that, or not of this story in general, but of this video, is that Bran's role, King Bran, is much more of a thing in the books. Like, Bran is needed to do many, many things, one of them being bringing back Jon Snow. And you could argue that Melisandre is going to do this by sacrificing Shireen, much like how she did on the TV show, but there is more to it, right? So Bran is being influenced by a dark primordial magic that is being told to him is the right thing to do but there's just darkness to it there's something unnerving about it and i mentioned in my video from uh a few days ago that maybe that's why george hasn't put out uh the winds of winter yet is because that is that subject matter is dark and depressing specifically the brand storyline maybe that's why george has mentioned before that brand's chapters are the hardest to write because they're so dark and gloomy so maybe all of this is tied into, you know, the King Bran storyline and the multiple things Bran must do to become king. Maybe he willingly has to let Jon Snow die in order for the certain pieces to fall into place. Like, maybe he has to willingly know to bring Jon Snow back to life in order for him to die again. I don't know. Uh, we've reached the breaking the time point in this video. I'm obviously going to make many, many more on A Song of Ice and Fire and many more on A House of the Dragon and, and Game of Thrones in general. Uh, if you enjoy those, just make sure you subscribe, turn those notifications on, and slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 42069. A super special shout out to every single member of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash your hunts reviews. And I want to thank you all. Yeah, that's right. You, right there. You, looking in the mirror. Yeah, you, uh, for watching this video. My name is Mark, and this has been Sir Hunts Long Night. Reviews. Ooh, ah, 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 boom.